Hi everyone, it's Taryn. And Stella from Meeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Decorum. Game designed by Charlie Mackin, Harry Mackin and Drew Tenenbaum and published by Floodgate Games. Let's get to the game. In Decorum, players are partners or roommates who have just moved in together into a new house and now it's time to decorate. As one sitcom put it, that is a guaranteed young couple fight scenario and I'm getting out of here before somebody throws a lamp. Players must now work together, making changes to the decor and repainting the rooms. Ultimately working together to get a set of decorations which meets the requirements on their own personal card, which they've seen, and on their teammate's card, which they haven't. If the players can do that inside 30 rounds of play, then they will win the game. Decorum is a scenario based puzzle game and has different rules and scenarios for two players versus with three or four. We'll take you through the game's two player rules first. To set up, put together the game's two part board using the two player side of the roof and the side of the house with the bathroom in the top left corner. Place the round counter at round one and put three of the five heart to heart markers beside the roof for later use. On the blackboard, place all of the game's objects. In each dotted space, you'll have a stack of four of the matching object. Each object has a type, wall hanging, curio or lamp, a style, modern, antique, retro or unusual, and a colour, red, green, blue or yellow. Above this board, stack all of the paint tokens. Take a scenario envelope from the box and you should play them in number order. Open it and remove the cards from within. The card showing the two people icon is the setup card and you should reveal this to everyone. The others show the player 1 and player 2 icons and you'll hand one of these cards to each player. That player may look at it and must keep it secret from the other. Set up the features of the house based on the setup card. These icons will show you which specific objects to place in each room and the background colour will show you which colour to paint the room. Read out loud the story associated with the scenario and each player may read out loud the flavour text at the bottom of their character cards. The tops of the cards will contain between three and five conditions related to how the house is decorated. And these will all need to be met for that player to be fulfilled. These are read secretly by each player who owns the card and must not be revealed to the other player until specifically directed by the game. Choose a first player and you're now ready to play. Decorum plays in a maximum of 30 rounds and you'll move the round marker across these 15 circles twice to count them out. In each round, each player will take a turn making one change to the house's decor and then receiving comment from the other player on whether or not that helped their objectives. Once both players have made a change and passed comment, you'll move to the next round. At the end of the 15th 20th and 25th rounds, you'll have the opportunity to have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion, through which you can share one of your conditions with your teammate, bringing you closer to the solution. The aim is to fulfil everyone's conditions by the end of the 30th round, and within that, to try to do it as early as possible. So now, let's have a look at a round in more detail. Firstly, the first player will take one action, and there are four different options for what that action may be. These are to add one object from the supply to an empty slot which matches that object in the house, or to move one object back from the house to the supply, or to take one object from the supply and exchange it for the same type of object which is already in the house. That is a wall hanging for a wall hanging, a curio for a curio, or a lamp for a lamp. Or the player may repaint a room, taking a paint icon and replacing it with one of the paint icons in the house. 
The player may also choose to pass, but only if all of the conditions on their card are already met. Next, the player who took the action makes a fulfillment check. They check whether or not all of the conditions on their card are met by the current decorations, and then tell their partner whether they're fulfilled or not. Then the partner performs the same check, once again revealing whether they're fulfilled or not. If both players are fulfilled, then you've won the scenario. If not, then the player who did not take the action now makes comment on that action. The comment may express positivity, negativity or neutrality toward the action which just took place, but must not include any specific information about the conditions on the card. You can role play your comments a little bit. So if an action, for example, place this lamp here and that works towards the other player's conditions, the player might say, ooh, I love that, or I'm glad you put that there, but could not say, I'm glad we really needed another unusual item in the kitchen. Likewise, the partner might make a negative comment if the action contradicted the partner's conditions and might make a completely neutral comment if the action neither helped nor hindered their conditions or perhaps wasn't perfect, but is something that could be worked around. Play then passes to the second player and you'll resolve the same sequence. The second player will take an action, you'll do a fulfillment check, and then the first player will make comment on that action. Then advance to the next round. At the ends of round 15, 20 and 25, you'll have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with your partner. Flip over one of your heart-to-heart -to -heart tokens and then, one at a time, reveal one of your conditions to your partner. That is, read it out off your card. Hopefully you can use this opportunity to better work together on the conditions which seem to be most at conflict with each other. The aim of the game is to get a set of decorations which fulfills both players' requirements before the end of 30 rounds. Whether you succeed or fail, you can score yourselves by gaining 3 points for each fulfilled condition on your cards and 2 points for each unused heart to heart. Conditions come in a wide range of types and it's best to explore them as you play the game. But I'll give you a few examples of the types of things you'll come across. Conditions which would be met by this layout include There is an unusual red curio in the bathroom. There are no objects in the living room. The house has at least three wall hangings. Both rooms on the right hand side of the house are painted red. Both downstairs rooms are painted a warm colour, that is, yellow or red. And by comparison, blue and green are cool colours. There is a yellow feature in every room. In these three cases it's the objects and this one is the wall colour. The house contains two identical wall hangings. In this case, it's the yellow unusual wall hanging. And even though the art on the token is slightly different, these are still considered identical objects. And the least common type of object in this house is the curio. Both the table on page seven of the rule book and the glossary on the back page will give you further information to define every type of condition you may come across. Do note that only the tiles you place on the board count towards your conditions. This living room meets the it has no green objects condition despite this pre-printed cactus. But why doesn't this couple just have a bunch of heart to hearts up front and do a well planned set of decorations, I hear you ask. Just remember that thematically nobody really knows what they want when they're decorating a house. You'll only know you like it when you finally see it all in place. That's why you won't really be in a position to articulate exactly what you want until you've been at the decorating for a little while. To play the three or four player game, you'll use the black envelopes instead of the white ones. These don't make up a sequential campaign, but the number of stars will give you an insight into its difficulty. When you open the scenario, you will get a pack of large and small cards. The card with all of the icons full, once again, is the setup card, and you can flip that and reveal it to all players. Then, if you play with four players, 
give each player one of the large cards and the three matching small cards. The large card will have three conditions on it, and each of the small cards will contain one of those same conditions. And you'll have these duplicates to facilitate a change to the heart-to-heart -heart phase. If you're playing with three players, you'll leave the fourth player's large card off to the side, and distribute the fourth player's small cards to the specific player identified on the back. This will give each player a fourth condition, and they must be given to the correct players for the scenario to work. In this situation, the condition on your card that you took from the fourth player is not duplicated on your large card, but you must still meet it as if it were. Flip the roof piece over to its four player side and use all five of the heart-to-heart -heart tokens. These are now called house meetings and take place after the 5th, 10th, 15th, 20th and 25th rounds. If you're playing a roommate scenario, which is any scenario showing these people icons in the setup card, then you'll flip over the house from its bathroom side to its two bedroom side. Then place these colored roommate markers into the matching bedrooms as part of setup. A condition which refers to your room means the bedroom containing your roommate's token. The flow of play is much the same as the two player game. Each round, each player will get a chance in turn order to take an action, do a fulfillment check, and then receive comments from any or all other players. In a roommate scenario, there is one more action available, and that is that you can move your roommate marker into the other bedroom, and then kick out one of the roommates who was there back to your old bedroom. Kicking another roommate out is mandatory if the room now has more than two players, but optional if the room has exactly two. The rules for house meetings also change slightly. Firstly, each player has the opportunity to voice a brief opinion on their progress. For example, saying that you think the team is getting close to a resolution, or that you think a specific player's efforts are taking you further away. You don't have the chance to do this sort of communication at the two-player game. Each player may then share one of their conditions, but only with one other player, and this is done by handing one of the small cards to the other player to read. Players can hang on to the condition cards that they've been given for future reference until such time as the owner of that condition wishes to share it with another player in a subsequent house meeting. Otherwise, the three or four player win condition is the same as for two players, with all conditions needing to be met within 30 rounds of play. You'll find these two special packages inside your box, and you'll open these when you get to a specific scenario in the two player game. The scenarios will give you the new rules to play with these components, but I won't otherwise spoil the surprise here. There are 22 player scenarios and 10 3 or 4 player scenarios in the initial box to play through, with further scenarios to be available online for endless replayability. And that's how to play Decorum. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.